Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for joining me here for this quick little tip. Today, I wanna to talk about how to identify the length or the max length of values in a column in Excel. And the reason we would do this is because sometimes we get feeds in for our database that we need to import, and the data in there may not conform to the standards we have in our database. So for example, if we have a name field, and that names field can only handle up to 200 characters, or maybe even 50 characters. Well, what if the feed we got in, the file that we're gonna load in, has more than that many characters? This would cause an error typically. And now it'd be nice if we had an ETL process that would load this and just take care of it all for us. But in the sake of fixing errors before they occur or kind of preventative medicine here, uh, this was a tip that I put out actually quite a while ago that seems to be pretty popular in my blog. And I just wanted to do a quick video version to explain how it actually works. So step one. The assumption is that we have a file that can be parsed by Excel. So if you have something like JSON uh, data, JSON data, some people say, then it won't work. But a CSV or an Excel file, tab delimited, uh, even XML, I believe, uh, Excel can handle most of the time. So this will work. Then the second assumption is that the number of rows in your file. So if you have a CSV, there really isn't a limit to how many rows can be in it, but Excel does have limits. So if it's over a couple million rows, then it's definitely not gonna work. And depending on the version of Excel you have, you may have to be even shorter than a million rows. So those things aside, what we wanna do first is open up Excel. And I'm gonna switch over to my screen here and show you how to do this. So here on my screen, I have Excel up and I have a file. This is a file I use a lot. It's Cogsley Services sales data from the US. And the example is I wanna find the max length of every field here. So if I look at a field like customer name, what is the longest customer name in this entire column? Now I could create a formula next to it and copy that down and sort. But what if I want to do that for every column here? I have a lot of columns, so we got to be careful. We want something that's more automated, a bit more advanced than that, and we can do better. I know we can. So step one, first, because I have a small resolution, I'm going to hide the ribbon here by double-clicking on the ribbon menu. Then I'm going to insert a new row by right-clicking on row one and just put a new row right above the old one. Now I'm going to type in a field here and I'm gonna start with the one that has text because I know this works with text. Let's see if it works with numbers too. And what I'm gonna say is equals max len. So len is length. So how long is this text field? Then I'm going to select all of my data. So I'm gonna click just down into my data, hold control and shift or command and shift on my Mac and the down arrow. That's selected all of my data here. Notice how in my formula now I have J3 through J8401. What that does is that just says, okay, go look in all of these values and find the max length. Now here's a trick though. I'm gonna close this out with parentheses and if I were to just hit enter here, I get an error. That's because this is a formula that needs to run on a set-based operation, it needs to run on the entire data set, not just one value. So what we have to do is click back in our formula, hold Control and Shift on Windows or Command and Shift on my Mac, hit Enter, and bam, it works. What changed? What's different? Well, take a look at the formula bar now. Now you see my formula here where it has squiggly lines or curly braces surrounding the whole formula. This tells Excel that this is an aggregate formula. It's something that I'm giving you an entire range and I want you to perform this operation on that whole range. This is a unique thing that's relatively new in Excel, I guess, and maybe a little unknown to a lot of people, if you, especially if you've been working with Excel for a while and haven't kept up to date with all the latest things that come out. So now with this, what I can do is I can just copy this. I can paste it on my next column over, on my next column over, on my next column over, so on and so forth, all the way over and to the very end, not that far, we just highlight all these rows, hit paste, and you can see how many characters each one of them is. If I start this from the left and I fill it out, I can then get the length of every single column in my data feed. Now, I'm gonna highlight both of these and then copy them. I'm gonna go just to a new sheet here and I'm gonna do paste special 
and I'm going to choose two options, values and transpose. So transpose is a way for it to switch the data around instead of being, I guess, columns now, it'll be rows. And I'm just doing value, so I don't want formulas or any of that. I just want the name and then the actual number. So what I could do now, if I wanted to, I could cut this and then paste it over here and then even create the code to build my table if I wanted to. So I could do something like this. This is a little trick that I use actually quite often. So let's say I'm using SQL and I wanna build my create table statement and I have a lot of columns here. So I don't wanna type all those out. It's just a waste of my time and I'm lazy. So let's do it this way. I type equals a double quote. So now I'm gonna enter some text now for this, if I'm doing it in something like SQL Server, I'll use a bracket. In other things like MySQL, I'll use a, a, a back tilde, like that which is left of the one character on my keyboard. So be aware of what your database wants to handle things where there are spaces and other special characters. Your databases may not even support that. In fact, a lot of database people, you may be screaming at the screen right now saying, no, you can't have a space in your column name. Ah, fine, fair enough. Do what you want to process those things. The simple find and replace will do. Here, I'm just gonna assume that we're going to allow it. So I'm gonna put in double quotes a open bracket. Now, if I hit enter, this would just give me the open bracket. Now what I wanna do is use the ampersand and add in my column name. So now I have that open bracket and the column name. Let's do it one more time. And this time let's add the close bracket. Boom, all right. So we've got that. Now, if I copy this all the way down, there we go. So now we have all of our column names escaped essentially or in brackets. So my database may or may not like that. Hopefully it likes it. Now, if I were just creating strings here, this is how I would do it. So I'm gonna hit space and say varchar. Now that's a data type for my database. If that's a bit out of your depth, don't worry about it but just know that this is the way we classify what type of data can go into this column. Now, a good way to do this would be to actually go down and make sure they're typed properly. So put things like ints for numbers and dates for dates and all those things. But the point here I just wanna make is show how to use this shortcut. So I'm not gonna harp or worry too much about that. So if I let this go, I have the column name in brackets, then I have the data type, and then I have an open parentheses I'm gonna add in now the length of that field. I'm going to close it with another parentheses and I'm going to add a comma. So now I have essentially what looks like the column definition for a create table statement in SQL. If I copy this all the way down, I have all of them all set up. I could then copy this out. I could then paste it into my SQL editor, add the rest of the create table statement, the before part and the after part and I would be good to go. So step one here, I can use this formula by using this conditional operator where I do the curly braces to find the max length or basically run that formula on a range where normally it only operates on a single cell. And then a good use case for that is to actually build a create table statement by identifying those and then using this little shortcut I gave you here. So I hope this was useful for you. And if you have any questions about it or any comments, any better ways to do it, it's been a while since I posted this, go ahead and leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you back here soon. Hey, thanks for checking out my video. I really, really appreciate it. Now, I also have a blog, bensullins.com, in case you haven't visited that. On there, I have videos like this. I have code samples. I have full articles describing all the tips and tricks and everything that I wanna share with you to help you in your career, as well as you can sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is basically a digest of all that, plus more stuff I found on the web that I found interesting that might be pertinent to you. So you can click this link here and go check that out. And again, I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you back here soon.